our guest tonight, the Derby County captain, as you've never seen him before, Sean Barker is one of football's hard men, but off the pitch he's a genuine gentle giant with a passion for music. In a rare at-home interview, he told Let Kick Off about his love of vinyl records and his extraordinary life growing up. Natalie Jackson reports. Derby County fans, defender Sean Barker is an all-conquering hero. It's an interesting person. Do you think he was a, a rocker or something like that? He's a super cover around the castle. He's our leader and we all obviously look up to him. But away from the dressing room, the talismanic captain is a lover of fashion, art, but most of all, vinyl. For me, it's, it's just the look, you know, the, the artwork and uh, going through them. At the moment, I'm uh, lucky to have got uh, quite a few cure ones from uh, Lee Glover, who's a, a coach at Derby. Yeah, massively insecure at the moment. Last summer, when he was injured and stuck in the treatment room, his obsession began. I find myself sat on, on, uh, on the bed with the machine I had to have on for eight hours a day, and then decided that I was going to stop collecting vinyl. I don't think you really understand the difference in sound quality and um, the kind of honest feel about a, a record until you listen to one. It's a bit of an obsession with me at the moment. Do you think you'd get away with bringing the vinyl and the decks into the dressing room? Um, I don't think I'd go that far. Um, a couple of years ago I spoke to the gaffer about uh, everyone choosing a, a track for me to put uh, onto a, a playlist before we would go out to, to play each game. And, and I think I'd just, just about persuaded him because I, I knew there'd be a few good tracks on there with me being in charge. So, uh, it's come round to it? Yeah, it's come round to it. Yeah, he, he gets a track as well. He went for, for Queen. <laughs> persona is a contrast to his hard man image on the pitch. Last season he carried a knee injury, needed an operation, refused to have it until Derby were out of danger. I just wanted to make sure that we were safe and um, the gaffer was, was happy me doing the job of just being you know, available for a Saturday and Tuesday game whenever he needed me, but I uh, probably had about seven months without training, which, which was tough. He puts Derby and family first. Family is a huge thing for me. Mum and Dad started fostering when I was, I think I was about two years old. Um, and in the 27 years I've been alive, I think there's been about 180 kids coming in and out of um, Mum and Dad's doors. Um, you see some kids with so many different problems, and as a family, we've tried to help them as much as possible. And you know, at Christmas time, we're expecting probably 25 people sat around the table. So it's kind of, it's always interesting, and it's never a quiet moment. It's interesting really because you shouldn't stereotype, but you are not the average footballer. No, I've, I've always said to everyone that's um, asked me about that, I've always said I'm a student in place football or whatever. You know, I'm, I love, love my music, I love my bands, I love my fashion, uh, I would have done art, um, media, and um, I was kind of lucky that I could head a ball. You know? who became a footballer and ever played in the Premier League? I don't know. Um, if you'd asked me a few years ago before I turned my late twenties, I would have hoped so. I, I do hope so. I hope it's with Derby County. Over the, and over the next few years we keep on pushing and, and, and we, we kind of buy the players that we need to, to get us out of this division. And be obviously the captain of a club like Derby County is a massive, massive thing. And, I'm very proud and I feel privileged to, to be that person. Yeah, interesting views from Sean Barker there. It's refreshing, isn't it, to see someone who's not your archetypal footballer? Well, it's, uh, he's got some collection, hasn't he? He's got some absolute classics. Yeah. Uh, for somebody so young as well, you know, he's, uh, he's not like us, is he? A 40 year old uh, looking at vinyl records anymore. He's, uh, he's a young kid. That's what I think he's nicked, he's nicked him out of our garage. Really, <laughs> yeah. uh, and he's thumbing through them and I was thinking, uh, I've no, got that. They're not <laughs> yeah. yeah, but he's also amazingly grounded as well, which is something you don't often get 
that inside of football is that the fostering in, with his parents and having seen kids come and go through his, his you know his front door. He's done he's done very well, you know, he's settled into the club very well. And like the supporters have said there, they're they're really impressed with how he performs. You know, they missed him as well this season. I think he missed the first sixteen league games of the season. Then he came in and suddenly that defence was just rejuvenated. I think the piece was all about his records and what he does away from uh, from football, but you can just tell talking to him that he's a solid citizen, a straight straightforward lad who you want in your team mm -hmm. who sort of heads it, kicks it, makes good decisions and is a, is a top defender. Yeah. The fans of course have taken him to their hearts and then when you hear stories that he played on for six months with an injury that that's required so surgery, yeah. I mean that's what they love to hear, isn't it? Well, you, you, you know, players um, accused of, of not wanting to play sometimes and for a player to do that and captain the team and go through it and put everything to the back, I think fair play to him. Yeah, I mean from my point of view, I mean, you, it's frustrating that when players pick up little niggles and knocks and uh, you know and then maybe shy away a little bit from that, for him to just say, listen, I won't be out in the training ground every day, but you pick me on a Saturday and I will give you know give up my best. Yeah, sure. Same type of thing.